Well, I want to welcome you to another Pod for Israel, and I'm super excited to invite back in. We have Golan Broshi. The Broshi is with us again. And uh, so we're going to be going over, an, I mean, really shocking title here, the, the Roots of the Gospel in Ruth. Yep. Okay, so the Roots of the Gospel in Ruth. Like, what does that mean? What, what roots are you talking about? How's the gospel in the story of Ruth? Well, the first one to mention it, of course, much, much, much before me, was Matthew hmm. in the gene- genealogy, you say, genealogy yeah, of Yeshua. Yeah, the genealogy of Yeshua. Yeah, yeah. when he mentions, he mentions Ruth as one of the, actually one of the four names of women that is mentioned there in chapter uh, one, is, is, is Ruth was one of the, one of the mother, one of the mothers of, uh, of uh, Yeshua. Yeah. Now Ruth is, is really a special nugget, you know, in the, in, in the Bible and especially in the Old Testament. Mm. First of all, it's the only second book in the Bible which is named after a woman. We have Esther right. and Ruth, and Ruth is, is, is not non-Jewish or no Hebraic from both sides. So yeah. she's the only person. Um, so a, a Gentile only, gets a book here. Which and a is woman, awesome. and a, a gentile wo- woman yeah. gets a book. Because Job, you can say Job was a gentile, but but the gentile woman, and oh, what a woman! She's a sh- right. really special character. The, the, this Ruth, you cannot. I don't blame Boaz for falling in love with her. She's mm-hmm. she, she's amazing. Yeah. And uh, we wanna we, we wanna just go over Ruth and see um, if if we get any any hints for the for, for the Messiah or the messianic character, and the relationship with the, between Jews and and gentile. Mm-hmm. In, 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 the book of, uh, in the book of Ruth. Awesome, well, let's dig in. Now, who wrote the question? You know, th- scholars are asking who wrote the book of Ruth? And in the book itself, there's several hints hmm. for the writer of Ruth. Now, the, 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 rabbis, the rabbis thought they knew who was it, and I think right. scholars agree with them on who wrote it, but we'll see some hints, and then we'll figure out who really, uh, who really wrote the, the, the book of Ruth. All right. So Ruth starts, the first verse, give us a hint. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled. So, so we know this story takes take place in the, the period of the judges. Right. Like Gideon, Iftach, Samson, right. uh, Barak, Deborah, mm-hmm. you say Deborah? Deborah, yeah, yeah. Deborah. Deborah. Yes. Uh, so, so, so this book, so whoever wrote this book must have lived after the after the time of the judges, because they knew about right. they knew about that period, but 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 we get another hint for the writer of, of Ruth, from uh, Ruth chapter four, verse fifteen, because there we have a phrase in Hebrew, which which reminds us something else. So if you can read Ruth, chapter four, verse fifteen. Okay, fifteen. May he be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age for your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is better to you than seven sons. So who is better to you than seven sons is almost identical to a phrase from 1 Samuel hmm. chapter 1, verse 8, where the, um, the, the, the husband of, of Hana is telling her, the husband of Hana, remember Hana hmm. and Penina, Penina could ha- had, had children, Hana didn't have children, so Elkanah in First Samuel 1, 8, what does he tell her? Yeah, he says, Then Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? And why is your heart grieved? Am I not better to you than ten sons? Yeah, so the same phrase in Hebrew, it's identical. There it's seven, in Ruth it's, uh, it's, it's seven, mm-hmm. and in Samuel it's ten. But, but the, the language is really similar in Hebrew. And that's another hint for who wrote, and I'm not gonna tell it yet because there's one more hint, Mm. who wrote the book of Ruth. So the last hint is Ruth, uh, excuse me, if you can read Samuel, 1 Samuel uh, chapter two, verse 21. 1 Samuel chapter two, verse uh, verse 21. What happens to Hannah? Okay, and the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. And the Lord visited, so the, the, the key is the Lord visited Hannah. And if you read Ruth hmm. 1, Ruth 1 verse 6, you'll see a similar, a similar uh, term. The Lord visited Hannah and in Ruth yeah. 1, 6, it says, Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return to the country of Moab, for she heard that the, in the country of Moab that the Lord had visited his people 
by giving them bread. So the Hebrew is identical besides Chana and his people, but the, besides that, everything is identical. Yeah. So again, we have a hint with Samuel hmm. and Ruth, there's, and, and, there, and there's more identical features with the story of Samuel nice. and Ruth. So we got another hint for, for, for who wrote Ruth, but the, but the strongest hint comes in the end of Ruth. Hmm. In the end of Ruth, chapter four, verse 17 and then 22. The end of Ruth, which is chapter 4, verse 17 and 22, is the final, the, the final uh, hint. Also the neighbor women gave him a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi, and they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. In verse 22? Verse 22, Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David. And this is the way Ruth ends. The story mm. of Ruth ends with David. And, hmm. the, and the scholars are saying this is really peculiar. Why would the author do the, It's like the author told us everything about Ruth just to end with David as if to give hope to yeah. someone that the king in Israel, although the king is from Benjamin tribe, it's not the final word of God. Hmm. The king will come, the king will be David. So now I'm asking you, who lived after the judges and you? That although Samuel, although although Shaul, Saul is the king, David is going to be the, the new king of Israel. Who knew that? Which prophet that probably wrote this this book knew these facts? Of course, Samuel. Samuel, and that's why most scholars and the sages and the, the, the rabbis that lived in Yeshua time say that Samuel must be the author of Ruth. Okay. Yeah. So it could be that. It could be. You could say maybe David did, maybe Solomon kind of yeah, dove but, into his history. But they're saying they're saying David, it, it, David sh couldn't be because David would say he was the ki David is not the king yet in Ruth. It just mm. gives the name of David. It, it's like the okay. it's like the author knows that the king is is not from Judah, right. but 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 there's an anointing on David. David is not the king yet but he's going to be the king. That's yeah. why his name is mentioned as if he's just, you know, just nobody. Yeah, and Jesse gave birth Well, no, it ends on David. So it ends on David, but not, not, but not King David. He's not a king yet. Right, so they didn't mention him as King David. So it, so yeah, it could right. be that when, 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 uh, when uh, Samuel wrote it, David wasn't the king yet. He was anointed. Could but, be in that but, transition period. Exactly, and he gave hope to the people that Shaul is, Shaul is doing wrong, Shaul is bad, Saul is bad, but it's not, it's not the end of it. Don't worry. It's, there's hope. There's yeah. David. David is coming. So, so the whole purpose of Ruth is to show how David came to be a king. Kind of the roots of David's exactly. faith heritage, you could say, uh, exactly. from his family tree. Exactly. Well, and like you said, we, you know, we go one step behind. We go a few steps behind Ruth and uh, earlier in the genealogy, and we find. Yeah, we'll, we'll and we'll go there. Oh, we'll go, okay. We'll I don't want to give a, get ahead of you. Okay, <laughs> we'll go, go there ahead. in a minute. What's the what's the what's the roots the roots of Ruth? All and right. This, this is really interesting. This is amazing. What God is doing with you know simple people, yeah. and people that are born in sin, mind you. Because right. Ruth is a descend descendant of an ugly sin that we'll, 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 we'll get to later. Okay. Yeah. But, but, but this is what God does with sinful people like us. Hmm. He can do miracles. Right. <laughs> can you believe it? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, 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 so let's go first. Where did they live? Where, where did this family come from? And it says in Ruth, uh, Ruth chapter 1, this, this family of, of Elimelech, Elimelech was the, 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 the father of, of this family. Mm -hmm. Where did they come from? They came from Bethlehem, but then they moved to Moab. Yes. Yeah, so now, now Beit Lechem, again, Lechem is <laughs> Lechem is a really fascinating he word in Hebrew because we know from Genesis thirty nine. You, you don't have to go there, but Genesis thirty nine six with Joseph and Pot and Potiphar's wife, mm. we know that bread is a symbol of of of, of a woman. Hmm. Because Joseph is telling uh, Potiphar's wife, he gave me authority on everything but the bread that, it, it, that is in his house. And, 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 the, and the commentators are saying the bread, of course, is, is, is his wife, mm. Potiphar's wife. Okay. So he told Joseph, everything is yours, but the bread I eat. So there's already kind of like a feminine symbolism that's already happening with the name of Bethlehem. Exactly. So we oh, have, I've never heard that. So, so cool. Bethlehem is 
something that would give birth to something. Okay. And we all know, yeah. we all know what, would, yeah. what would come out of Bethlehem. But only, even the name, it's like hmm. the house of the, 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 house of the, the woman, the, uh, what do you, how do you say, where the fetus is inside of yeah, a woman? Her womb. Her womb. So you could say that Bethlehem is pregnant with... Exactly. And Meaning in be- Bethlehem, <laughs> Bethlehem is, 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 is the womb. Wow. And who's going to... So and, I've heard of it called the house of bread, Bet Lechem. But bread but is a symbol of, of a woman in wow, the Bible. Wow, that's so cool. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> so we have, again, this... That's think, amazing. And think, Yeshua told them, Yeshua the Messiah told them, read the Bible. It speaks about me. Read mm, it. Man. Okay? Read it with your own eyes. Not, not with commentators and, you know, with, with filters. Just read it. Yeah? Wow. And, that, and, and that's what we're doing. And then, you know, names. Names in the Bible are so important. Because in Ruth chapter two, we have we have other hmm. figures, other characters that come along, and so the name of the person was in, in chapter in verse two, Ruth one two, Ruth one two. The name of the man was Elimelech. The name of his wife was Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Mahalon and Chilion. So there's an irony that the the, the, the name of the father is Elimelech. My God is king. Mm-hmm. But if, if your God is king, how come... Yeah, why are you leaving? Th- th- there's a hunger and you're leaving? Yeah. If your name is God, my God is king. Don't yeah. you trust them? So you, you, you're going to Moab, you, you're going to, to, to a different... Because there's hunger, you know? But, but, but more than that, his two sons, this is amazing. Look at the, the, their names. Hmm. Yeah, the first one is... is uh, who's the first one in, in English? What Mahalon. Does it say? Mahalon is a disease. <laughs> In Hebrew, machala is a disease. So machalon is somebody that would catch a disease. It's, huh. it's like a name of a disease. I tell you, parenting, I don't get it these days. You know, like, <laughs> you know, you name your kid Methuselah, his death will bring. You name your kid Mahalon, you know, a disease. And, and, and the second one, Gosh. kilayon, is, 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 is to perish. How do you say it in English? That his brother, Mahalon and kilayon? Shilion or Sh- kilayon. Yeah. In Hebrew, it's, it's, it's to perish. Wow. So, so we have a hint that these fellas are not going to live long. You know, hmm. Eli, Elimelech is betraying his name. Instead of trusting God, he's trusting himself and he's going down. You know, in a way, you kind of question. Okay, so I was a little joking there of like, why name your kids this sort of stuff? Who knows what sort of hell they were facing? But like, we don't know how hard those situations. It could have been that he came there and they started like they were on death's door when they arrived. But and, and then they named their kid this, you know, and so we don't, this, there's, people would name their kids after the events that they were experiencing typically, you know, like. And again, we can say, you know, Samuel wrote it. So when Samuel wrote, wrote the book, yeah. he already knew what's, what's, he knew what happened. He knew what happened to them. So, yeah. so, so it, it could be like a nickname that Samuel gave them. You know what I mean? It yeah. could be a nickname that Samuel <laughs> gave them. Yeah, okay. You know, but still, you. but still, okay. There's, there's some, something to learn in their names. Let's yeah. just walk Yeah, because that. the name is like a prophecy, like a foreshadowing of yeah. what's going to happen to you. That's, yeah. the, 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 so we know it's not going to, it's going to be ugly. It's going to, sure. it's going to end soon. But they go, and in Ruth, you know, they, they go to Moab. Which is um, on the on the west coast of Yam HaMelech, on the Dead Sea. Yeah. The west. So, like, if you're at the Dead Sea, it's going to be kind of south and and west, east. Right? east. east. I'm sorry, east. Yeah, east the of east, the Dead Sea. On the east coast of the Dead yeah. Sea. Yes. And, and you know the thing about the thing about Moab is you see, you know, in Isaiah it talks about the redemption of these lands that were once enemies, like Egypt was an enemy. Assyria was an enemy. You have these different enemies that God is redeeming and bringing back into covenant with him at the end of days. But as you read through Isaiah, like there's kind of, I would say there's even stronger bitterness and a stronger kind of, you know, don't go there to Moab than you would see even in don't go to Egypt. Of course we know don't go to Egypt, or to Assyria. And going south and going east, 
n- never results in something good in the Bible. It's yeah. usually, in the Bible, it's usually hint for usually for death. Bad things, and uh, how do you right? say when a when a woman is barren is not giving? A, it's usually a, yeah, a, 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 a it's hint. a curse. Exactly. So you go in south, you go in east. It's not going to end well, and that's okay. what they chose. That's what they chose to do. So in w- when we're talking about this land, I mean, the people of that land were more hated than the Syrians. We'll, we'll talk about more them. hated this, than the Egyptians. The list, the list, the list of it was the a list. place you weren't supposed to go. The le- Israel wouldn't supposed to even c- touch them, not marry them, not do, n- don't do anything right. with them. Okay. Because of the history we have, but we'll touch about it. But, but they went. But in Ruth, one, four, th- there's amazing hint for, for, for something miraculous. Can you read one, Ruth 1, verse 4? Now they took wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpha, and the name of the other, Ruth. Yeah. And they dwelt there about 10 years. 10 years. And Ruth didn't get pregnant. Ten years. Ten years she was married, and mm. she didn't. Now I'm sure they had, you know, an yeah, intimate relationship. Yeah. Because because back then when you marry someone, you, you sometimes you marry by the by the physical act. Right. So I'm yeah. sure they had intimate relations. But 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 it's like God saved Ruth. There was ten years of barrenness. Exactly. But it doesn't say it. It's like. 10 years what's going on here mm. no kids and and god and and we don't hear anything about Ruth being barren or nothing but, but see, it's god saving her for something you know here's the thing we as we were discussing this earlier i was thinking you know like today you know we have all sorts of fertilization clinics and stuff and they can figure out like who's like kind of who's who's who has the problem is yeah. it the man or the woman and you kind of know back then they had no clue and she probably thought she was cursed. She probably thought that, I, you know, God, God hates me, or I've done something wrong, or maybe I'm just broken. But and you don't, you don't I can't have, have kids for ten years. You're trying, you can't have it. That was her. That was her bail. That was her blessing. Because if she yeah. did, if she did get pregnant from Mahalon, she wouldn't have any legal right, according to the Torah, to marry Boaz. The right. only reason why she, why Boaz had to marry her was because she didn't have children from Mahalon. To carry on the exactly. name. Exactly. So just, can you imagine God God moving that, God directing that act? Yeah. Because the only way Ruth can marry Boaz is if she doesn't have any kids. But she's married for 10 years. These are those like obscure things in the Torah. We read over it and we're like, what? You know, like, would God really want me to marry my, you know, sister-in-law? Or stuff like that. These are those awkward things that we kind of like skirt over. But God was using that in this time not just to preserve the seed, but also to create this event here, this reconciliation, this bringing in this Gentile woman that would become... Now, you remember when we said Beit Lechem, we said Lechem is a right. symbol of a woman. So right. Beit Lechem could be like the uh, incubator or the, uh, how do you say? The, the womb. The womb. Yeah, yeah, the womb. So in, in Ruth, in Ruth 1.6, hmm. there's another amazing Hebrew word that, that gives, that gives the, even highlights it even more. Ruth one. Six, because God does something. So we know that Mahalon and Shilion they also died. died of so the woman survived her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Why? Moab. Why? For she heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had visited his people by giving them bread. Visited. Visited. Mm. The name, the word visited in Hebrew is pakad. Pakad. Now, pakad, mm. the first time Pakad appears in the Hebrew Bible, in the Torah, is when God, Pakad, visited Sarah. Hmm. When God visited Sarah and she became pregnant. Wow. Now, of course, you're saying that's the first in the Torah. Sh- that first, you, you, you can read it from, from, um, you, from Genesis 21 1. 21 1, it's, it's in yeah, Genesis right 21 1. God visited Sarah and she became pregnant. Wow. And God visited his people. Mm-hmm. And Ruth and Naomi, and of course Orpah, they're going back to Israel because they heard there's, it's, it's like there's a pregnancy. Something is going, something's, something's cooking. Something's about to be birthed. Something's cooking. You know, and, and it's interesting because you don't, when he phrased it of their reason for going to Moab, he didn't use that same phrase. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. They just, they had bread. There was no bread. It was a hard time. I mean, there, it wasn't like he just wanted to go for, for a pleasure cruise. He went to Moab because he, he thought, well, this is the only way for us to survive. So he left 
kind of God's covering in land. And now, and now, and and now, now God, he's coming back, and, and he's the, visited. God she's visited coming back Israel. It's a something is going to be. There, hmm. There's a birth coming. God is birthing something out of Israel. But 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 she has two wonderful daughter-in-law. You say daughter? -in -law. Yeah. Amazing. They mm -hmm. love her to death. And one of the one of them, Ruth, actually says, "I'm, I'm I love you to death." Yeah. Yeah. Would, uh, where you die, I'll die. Yeah. But 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 look, they go, and and she 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 returns to Israel. And she looks back and she sees two, the two girls are following her. Nomi's yeah. going back to Israel. She's look, what are you, she's, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> but, but see, you know, like I don't see her as being a, a grouch because obviously, you know, like Naomi, she had something. She had something here. I, I would say, like in my opinion, I look at this and Naomi must have really taught them about the ways of God. There was something special. To, for you to follow your mother-in-law, I mean, typically the mother-in-law thing is, uh, some people have good relationships, but typically the joke is, oh, my mother-in-law. Oh. And they will but, you leave know, her. But, but here, you know, even even her, even her uh, sister-in-law was willing to go along until Naomi really pressed on her, no, 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 go, 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 please go back. And I'll tell you how much you're right, because it's against all odds, because the last place Ruth and Orpah want to go is Israel. Yeah. Because in Israel they would be they would they would be like leopards. Nobody would touch them. They're they're from Moab. They're right. cursed. The, 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 you know you shouldn't marry them. Shouldn't touch them. Don't do business with them. We we hate them. Yeah. So the last place Ruth wants to go is to Israel. Why do you want to go to Israel? It's like you know for the the foreign workers we have. In, yeah, in, but in, you know like even even the, the, there's some racism. There's some problems. But I would say it's more like. If you are an Israeli moving to Iran, okay, like, because over here, I mean, like even like we've had people from Saudi Arabia and they're like treated like celebrities here. You know, the people from when Dubai opened their borders and they started coming and they have the full, you know, dress, they're treated like celebrities. But if an Israeli was to go to uh, Iran, they would get a different sort of treatment. <laughs> exactly. Um, that's the sort of stigma and the sort of animosity that was there. And I think that in the end, Orpa. You say that the other the other name in English or pie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, she understood it. She understood that it doesn't worth it. It doesn't worth it going to Israel, be, mm. because it, everything is against it. It doesn't worth it, unless unless there's something special in th that, that that Ruth experienced in her heart that 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 gave her the audacity, yeah. Yeah. The, the courage to, to go. To, to Israel after Nomi, to a land she doesn't know, a language she probably doesn't speak, people that would treat her like a foreigner, yeah. that doesn't deserve anything, but something, something inside her told her, I, I have to go there. I this is my, I, I don't feel home anywhere in the world. Mm. It, it might be, it might be there. Maybe God wants me there. And, and she says it actually. Yeah. So now if you can read, is it Ruth, Ruth 1? Uh, chapter uh, uh, chapter 14. Yeah, verse 14. So, you know, Ruth is trying to convince them, you know, don't come, don't follow me. Okay, so um, then they lifted up their voices and wept again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. Oh, and that's, this is just incredible. The word clung, you say clung, to, 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 to glue. Yeah. In Hebrew, it's actually the, 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 the root for glue, davka, mm. davka. Devek, right. Devek is glued to Davak or Davka is to glue with her. She glued to her. That's and strong. the first yeah. time, the first time this term appears is when Adam and Eve, well, they shall become one flesh. Mm. Davak so he would, he would clean, mm. he would glue to his wife. So it's it's, it's uh, Genesis 2, 24. The first time this Hebrew root appears, it's in, in Genesis 2, 24. If you, I don't know if you have it there. Oh, let me pull it Ge up. Genesis two twenty four, and and Ruth glued glued to Naomi. She, she, it's, it's like she's stuck with her. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become so, one flesh. So, be joined is the same root that you said glue or cleaned, cl cl cleanse to her, cleanse you know, to her. You know, I just think of like as I'm reading what Ruth said. And treat me not to leave you, nor turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. So the Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death 
separates parts you and me yeah. that's what we say in our marriage vows like exactly. till death do you part you know like this is a vow that's deeper it's like a covenant it's like Ruth it's a, made now Ruth yeah. is a Gentile of Gentiles and Naomi is the the, 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 the Jew, Jews of she's from she's from Jews she's from Bethlehem Bethlehem so 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 you know that Naomi There's, wasn't just a nice but person it wasn't just that she was just charismatic and who can and glue, fun who can create one out of a Gentile and a Jew God. That far. Only yeah. God. Only God can glue them together. So, like a man and a woman. Like the first man and the first woman in Genesis. The yeah. same Hebrew root. This is so important because she glued with Gentile. Yeah. With a Jewish, a nice Jewish woman. You know. And she glued her. She wouldn't leave her. And I, I, I just think, that, like as we were discussing this earlier, I was thinking, you know, like, you look at the character of, of Naomi, we kind of see the sad parts. But, of course... What would have made these two women, foreign women, willing to be paras, if outcasts, not God, exactly. if not outcast God in a land, but not God himself? So how did they see God inside of Naomi? She must have been... Also, Naomi knew the, the precepts of the Torah because then she was able to instruct her daughter-in-law on how to navigate the situation with Boaz. She knew the Torah, and so she used that in kind of reu, you know, reunification here. So of course God worked in 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 Ruth in Ruth's heart right. something so he he's like he circumcised uh, her heart hmm. now the, of course the rabbis are saying that's the the clue of the conversion you know the conversion process she's proclaiming that yeah, she's yeah. but but but, but ne- you know conversion or not conversion her heart was converted yeah converted to was, God yeah it's it's like Rahab remember Rahab is saying yeah. and. And, 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 and I'm mentioning Rahab for, for a reason, because Rahab, Rahab also told the, the Jewish spies, we, we heard what your God did. That, that's in, I think, in Joshua, is it the, the second chapter in Joshua, when Rahab is telling the spies, remember me, save me, mm-hmm. I want to be with you, I want to go with Israel, because I, I believe in your God. We heard what your God did to the Egyptians. And why is Rahab... Why is Rachav, Rahab, the harlot, why is she so important to our story? Hmm. Because she's the mother of Boaz. Yeah, she's down the genealogy exactly. line. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, so, Not the direct mother, okay? No, no Ruth doesn't know. Ruth right. doesn't know it. In this stage, Ruth doesn't know anything about Boaz. She doesn't know that Boaz is a son hmm. of Rahab that joined Israel the same way that Ruth is joining Israel. Yeah, you see what Rahab, her statement of faith is... Yeah. Not just, hey, I saw what happened to the other guys, but she says, um, as soon as we heard these things, our hearts melted, neither did there remain any more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. Now, therefore, I beg to you, swear by me, the Lord. So, you know, she, she was proclaiming the Lord is God over all the earth, over the heavens and the earth, everything. And Ruth, can you imagine that? Ruth doesn't know. Hmm. She doesn't know that the man she's going to marry is is the son yeah. of a woman exactly like her, yeah. a harlot. Yeah. A, a, prost- a prostitute, right? A, yeah. A, a, not just a woman. Not just a woman. Uh, but not just a Gentile. But, not a, but a harlot. And you know, she it's joined like, Israel by faith hmm. the same way Ruth is joining without knowing that. So now you're starting to expose those roots of the gospel in Ruth now. And Rehob again appears. Rehob appears in yeah. the gospel in, 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 in the gospel of... No, she doesn't... She, uh, actually, wait. Does Rehob, I think, appears also in the gospel of Matthew, the, cha- mm-hmm. for the first yeah. chapter. One of the four women. Yeah. Right? We have Tamer. We have Bathsheba. Yeah. We have Rehob and we have Ruth. Yeah. So... so this is this is incredible. This is again. This is so what, you, you're right that you say this is why the, the whole gospel is here. And Matthew, saw, it's like Matthew saw it. <laughs> you know, he saw it. Now, uh, going back to Ruth's descendant, if you can go back to Genesis nineteen thirty-seven, Genesis nineteen thirty-seven, we'll see what again. Ruth was born. In, in a terrible sin, you know, Ruth as a descendant. Yeah, her descendants came from some, some bad situations. Yeah, what happened? Um, so this is after Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot had fled to the nice, you know, fertile valleys of Sodom and Gomorrah. And, of course, we know the whole thing of the judgment that fell upon. And he with his two daughters. They, they, they fled. Him. Lot's wife died, uh, mm-hmm. was turned to a pillar of salt, and then they fled to the hills. Uh, and so, and it verse, has, yeah, nineteen Genesis nineteen thirty seven. So thirty seven, the firstborn. In other words, thus both the daughters of Lot 
were with child by their father, the firstborn, bore a son and called his name Moab. He is the father of the Moabites this day. Yeah. And, and the he, other son is the Ammon, yeah, the Ammonites. Yeah. Yeah. So Ruth, again, is a descendant of a horrible, horrible yeah. situation. Circumstance. Nevertheless, it's just, again, it gives us a hint. If she comes from that low, yeah. only God can do something wonderful. Right. Be because who does God look at? If not the broken ones, the, yeah. the weak one, the, the meekest, right. right? Who does he look at? He doesn't yeah. need the, you know, if he chooses the, the, the best and the strongest, how, how would his name be glorified? Yeah. But he chooses Ruth that comes from, oh, this is so terrible, you know, heartbreaking circumstance. Mm -hmm. It's not her fault, right? Of course. You, you couldn't blame her, but she was born, it, it, you can say, born in, into that ugly sin. Yeah. yeah? Um, and, and then in Ruth chapter 2, verse 2, by the advice of Naomi, Ruth is going, according to the Torah, she, what is she going to do? Ruth uh, 2, 2. So Ruth the Moabitess said to Naomi, Please let me go to the field and glean heads of grain after him in whose sight I might find favor. And she said to her, Go, my daughter. Yeah, and she goes to, to, to the, to, 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 um, as it says in Deuteronomy 24, 19, when, when somebody has a field of yeah. wheat, uh, and, and by the way, we read, I, I maybe forgot to mention it, that usually traditionally Ruth is read, the, the, sto the, the book of Ruth is read in Pentecost, you say, Shavuot, yeah, yeah. In the, because, because of, the, of the harvest time. Right. So usually, traditionally, Ruth is, is read in, in, hmm. in Pentecost. But according to Deuteronomy uh, 24 and 19, when you have a field, don't and 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 and, and you, you you gather the, the the wheat if something falls down and you didn't gather every leave, leave it. it leave it for the poor leave it for the poor and and Ruth yeah. and Ruth knows that probably Naomi told her or mm -hmm. she, she knows the the law of the land and she takes advantage of of, of the law of the Torah yeah. and she goes to pick what what the workers left in the in the field but then uh, in Ruth chapter two verse eleven. Uh, something something incredible happens between Ruth and Boaz. Uh, if you can read Ruth uh, 2, 11. Okay, and Boaz answered and said to her, It's been fully reported to me all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, and how you have left your father and your mother and the land of your birth, and have come to a people whom you did not know before. The Lord repay your work, and a full reward be given to you by the Lord God of Israel under whose wings you have come for refuge. Now, the, this, is, this is so loaded because what Boaz just told Ruth yeah. is almost identical to what God told Abram in Genesis 12, 1, to leave mm. his, 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 his country, his nation, his father's house, and go to a land which he doesn't know. This is, yeah. So Boaz, to, tell, the Boaz is telling Ruth, I heard, I heard what you did in, 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 for the sake of Naomi. I, yeah. I heard what you did just to protect her. I heard how you left your father and your mother and, and, you, and, and the place you were born, hmm. your people. You left everything hmm. for, for, for her sake, for Naomi's sake, for, for Israel's sake. And that's exactly what God told Abram. Can you, hmm. now, can you imagine? Bo Boaz, Boaz probably grew up on the stories of Abram, how he left everything. Yeah, yeah. And he sees Ruth doing that. Yeah. Boaz is seeing Ruth doing the same thing. You can say the same trip that Abraham did, leaving yeah. everything she knows behind mm. and going to a land she doesn't, you know, it's a promised land, but she doesn't know anything there yeah. besides Naomi. And now Boaz, he sees that, he understands that. Yeah. And he says, if you can, um, again, he says, uh, if you can, re you can read verse the, the end of verse 11. And how you left your father and mother and the land of your birth and have come to a people whom you did not know before. The Lord repay your work, and a full reward be given you by the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. So again, under whose wing you will come, we have we we, we have hints for for for, Eze for for parts of Ezekiel where God mm -hmm. God is putting His wings above Israel right, right. and protecting Israel. And again, Israel, which was was full of blood and dirty and fornicating, and God is putting His 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 wings upon Israel. So again, it's it's what we see. In, in one hand, Ruth is is depicturing a Gentile of Gentiles, but on the other on the other hand, it's like Ruth is the, the, like the prodigal son. You know what I mean? A sinful right. person that, out of love for God, comes and joins the faith 
and she's being protected. She's hmm. being God is God is God is putting His favor uh, uh, upon her. Now, in uh, if we skip a little bit, we skip in Ruth three. If you can read, uh, and and then we'll see a, a strong hint for Israel in Ezekiel. Ruth three, verse three and verse verses three and nine. Ruth three verses three okay. and nine. Therefore, wash yourself and anoint yourself. Put on your best garment and go down to the threshing floor. Yeah. Now this is Naomi telling okay. Ruth to, to to go and meet Boaz. So before meeting Boaz, again she's telling her, "Can you read verse three again?" Therefore, wash yourself and anoint yourself, put on your best garment, and go down to the threshing floor. And then verse 9, when she goes. And he said, Who are you? So she said, I am Ruth, your maidservant. Take your maidservant under your wing. Again, under your, your wings. Relative. Under your wings. Ex this is exactly the, the language in Hebrew, the, the same language that uh, it's, it, it appears in, in Ezekiel uh, 16. 8 and 9, Ezekiel mm. 16, 8, the same way God is washing and cleaning and cleansing Israel yeah. with water, with clothes, with, with oil, and protecting, putting his, putting his wing upon. So we know that Ruth, is, this book is, it has like a, it's like a microcosmos, of the whole story of Israel and the Gentiles and salvation. Mm. Everything is packed in this little book that is called Ruth. And we see that from the use of the special use of a uh, use of the hebrew now in ruth chapter 3 verse 11 boaz is telling uh, i think it's boaz saying what is he saying he says and now my daughter do not fear i will do for you all that you request for all the people of my town know that you are a virtuous woman a virtuous woman now a mm -hmm. virtuous woman in hebrew is eshet chayil the term eshet chayil, virtuous woman. Eshet chayil. All you men, you need to remember, <laughs> memorize this. Why? Well, what do we traditionally do in Israel and on, on the eve of Shabbat, on Erev Shabbat, on the from Friday night? The, the virtuous woman, right? The virtuous. Yeah. The same term appears only three times in the Hebrew Bible. Hmm. The, the the virtuous woman, eshet chayil, two times in Proverbs and one time in Ruth. Hmm. Now Ruth is being called by Boaz, eshet chayil, virtuous woman. Who wrote Proverbs? Solomon. Is Solomon related to yeah. Ruth somehow? Uh, for sure, yeah. How is Solomon related to Ruth? <laughs> it's, uh, it's his great, great, great uh, A great, great grandmother. Yeah. Just great, great grandmother, right? Yeah. Uh, so when Solomon, can you imagine that? Solomon is writing a virtuous woman and he has in mind, he's like, I'm dedicating this song in Proverbs, I'm dedicating it to, to my, my great, great grandmother. <laughs> because she's the only one, the only one in the Hebrew Bible that is ever called yeah. A virtuous woman in, in the same Hebrew phrase mm. that, that appears three times in, in the entire Hebrew Bible. Now, the, the, there's a problem. So Deuteronomy 23 gives us the reason, the legal reason why Ruth cannot marry an Israelite. Okay. Ruth, as a Moabite, cannot, under the law, she cannot marry Boaz. Yeah. She cannot marry him. It says in Deuteronomy 23, starting in verse 3, an Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter the assembly of the Lord even to the tenth generation, none of his descendants shall enter the assembly Why? of the Lord forever. Why? Because they did not meet you with bread and water on the road when they came, you came out of Egypt, and because they hired against you Balaam the son of Beor from Pethor of Mesopotamia to curse you. Yeah, that's the story we have in, in the book yeah, of Numbers. Yeah, the donkey and Balaam. So not only she's born in this ugly sin, you know, she's a descendant of an ugly sin with, with a father that sleeps with, with his two daughters. Yeah. Not only that, her people didn't welcome Israel when they went in the desert. It says, you shall not seek their peace nor their prosperity yeah. all your days forever. So Ruth is now, Ruth and Boaz, and, and Boaz is obviously in love with Ruth. We have a, we have a huge problem because under that, and Boaz is, Boaz is keeping the Torah. Yeah. It says that he's a he's a gibor chayil. He's a, he's, a, he's a righteous man. He's keeping the Torah. We have a problem. He cannot marry her. But the Torah that gives us the problem mm. also gives us the solution, because if you read in a, in a Deuteronomy twenty five, Deuteronomy twenty five, five and six, so Deuteronomy. If brothers dwell together and one of them dies and has no son, the widow of the dead man shall not be married to a stranger outside the family. Her husband's brother shall go into her, take her as his wife, and perform the duty of the husband's brother to her. The, hu the, the brother of the husband that died. Now in Ruth 4, verse 10, can you read 
Ruth 4, verse 10, we have a hint that Boaz is exactly that brother because Boaz is speaking to, the, to, to, to another relative. And what is he saying? Ruth says, Moreover, Ruth, the Moabitess, the widow of Mahalon, I have acquired as my wife to perpetuate the name of the dead through his inheritance, that the name of the dead may not be cut off from among his brothers and from his position at the gate. You are my witnesses this day. We said we have a problem. Ruth, can, because she's Moabite, she cannot marry Boaz, an Israelite, under the law. But then but, we read the law about the brother. But the law gives us, again, the, exactly, the law gives us a, an opportunity to redeem, redeem Ruth, because if the brother dies, his, his, if the husband dies, his brother must marry the wife. Hmm. And you can read that in Ruth 4. Verse 3, when Boaz is talking to the other relative, what is he saying? Ruth 4, verse 3. So Boaz had called up his other relative and to the gate, and Boaz uh, said, Come aside, friends, sit down here. So he came aside and sat down. And he took ten men of the elders of the city and said, Sit down here. So they sat down. And he said to the close relative, Naomi, who has come back from the country of Moab, sold the piece of land which belonged to our brother Elimelech. Our brother Elimelech. So either Boaz was... Boaz was probably a brother of Elimelech, so he was really close mm -hmm. relative yeah. to Mahalon, the husband of Ruth. He was the, the closest you get, besides the, the other one that was mm -hmm. closer than him. So Boaz is as if Boaz is standing in line. One of them, there, there's one behind, b b in front of Boaz, mm -hmm. which is even closer, probably Boaz's um, um, bigger brother, older brother. Yeah. So one is standing behind, uh, before Boaz, and he, if he if he wants to marry Ruth, he can marry her legally. He can, and Boaz has to Boaz is second in line. And he would take the inheritance, which at Ex first exactly he was happy to grab. He, he that was inheritance. happy because oh, I can get a, I can get the field. Yes. But then he heard oh, wait, there's a catch. But, but wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> there's a catch. I have to marry. Now he was probably married already. This yeah. relative. And he says, wait, 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 wait. I didn't know I'm getting. But there's I'm something else. Ruth. He said, I don't want to spoil my inheritance. Exactly. So again, we're kind of seeing that. This step that Boaz took was a step of faith too. Exactly. So, like you know, like as we're stitching all this stuff together, like first of all, we see we see a woman who was, you could say, of the cursed nation that were cut off, cut out. They couldn't come to the temple ever. You know, there's this, like this big wall between them and God. God, it's like God did everything, redeeming them, bringing them in. And in fact, you know, we would see the Messiah would come from that lineage. The King David would come from that lineage. And, and you know, we, we talk a lot about the tabernacle of David, right? You know, that's, yeah. been, that's in the prophets, talk about it. And what was that tabernacle of David? Especially if, you know, you, you have that connection to uh, Proverbs 31 and the, the woman of valor. It's, it's, you know, you're seeing this redemptive no. factor that everyone knew and that David celebrated is bringing the outcast, bringing the By nations the to worship. Exactly. And you see that one new man all through Ruth because according to the rabbinic halacha, both Boaz and Ruth are not Jewish. Mm. Boaz is not, his mother is not Jewish, Rahab. And yeah. Ruth, Ruth's mother, of course, is not Jewish. So according to the halacha, King David, none of his sides is, is Jewish according to the? Can you imagine that? Uh, yeah, to, to according the to modern the modern day halakha, no, no, but, but, of course, but, but yeah, listen, you know, the rabbis. But but what's what's uh, what's astonishing is the rabbis acknowledge that the Messiah would come from David. Exactly. But but David from both of his grandparents wasn't Jewish because Boaz wasn't Jewish according to the halakha, yeah. and Ruth wasn't Jewish. But the rabbis wouldn't have a problem with that <laughs> <laughs> because Ruth converted, of course. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, of course, of course. But but it just shows you that God can take out of even out of Gentiles. You know, he can bring the Messiah forth mm. through David, but out of a Gentile her heritage, he can bring the Messiah. So it's it's out of the Gentile, through the Jews, and coming back to the Gentile, wow. making a one one human. So again, Ruth and Boaz are, are encapsulating everything. You know, they're this is it. And so we're seeing that Their promise, uni unity, that promise that that's been fulfilled in Yeshua. And as we see today, you know, like that's now encompassing every tribe, tongue, and nation, not just the outcasts of this tribe of Moab, not just those outcasts in Edom and these other places. We're talking about that God has redeemed to himself a people by faith, just like exactly. yeah. how she came in by faith and was grafted in under the shadow of God's wing. And Boaz is going to save her life. And why do I say save? Okay. Because the, the, the Bible, she, Ruth, in chapter 3, 
chapter 3, verse 9, after speaking to Naomi, Ruth knows that Boaz is the only one that can redeem her, save her. She's the chapter 3, Ruth 3, okay. verse 9, just the end of the verse, what does she tell what, what, what does it what does she tell him? Take your maid yeah. under your wing, for you are a close relative. For your close relative, but the, the Hebrew says Goel. Goel is a redeemer, mm. a, a, a savior, and and exactly according to what it says in Leviticus uh, Leviticus twenty seven, where, where, where if you want to redeem a field, mm -hmm. redeem a field that was that was lost because of a death. So Boaz is a redeemer. It's. A, this Ruth is redeeming him, but he's redeeming her. It's, you see redemption yeah. all through the story yeah. because Boaz is the redeemer, Goel in Hebrew, yeah. Goel. He's the redeemer of yeah. Ruth. And out of both of them, yeah. out of David, would come the ultimate redeemer, mm. the Messiah. Just, so can you good. see it? Man. This is just, is just, this is why I'm saying this, this small book named after a, a, a gentile woman that was maybe worshiping idols when she grew up yeah. you know <laughs> this huh. book is, is is all about the gospel about yeah. ab about going to the gentiles and bringing forth redemption that would make the jew and the gentiles one once more grafted in by faith by the way mm. ruth uh, ruth is related to abram because lot was the nephew yeah lot was a nephew of abram so anyway Ruth is part of Abraham descendant. Can you see it? Man, so like, you know, you gotta you you have to be inspired by that. Just to know like God can redeem anything. You know, he, and he's he loves the redemption. Yeah. He loves to bring the outcast in. He loves to bring in those who who have the worst past. So you can't you can't ever say to God, ah, oh, you don't know what I've been through, you don't know what I've done. Uh, as long as there's breath in our lungs, there's now, a day of redemption for us. Could now, be today. What's, what's amazing that we said that, that now Boaz has a legal right to marry Ruth only if the first relative doesn't. Now, if you can read chapter 4, verse 1, it's amazing because, look, we have a relative of Elimelech that can marry Ruth before Boaz. But the, the end of verse, uh, verse 1 in chapter 4, because Boaz is telling Ruth, wait, there's another redeemer before me, so wait. But, but what does the, the, the end of the verse say, or the second part of the verse? So Boaz came and said, come aside, friend, sit down. So he came aside and sat down, and he took the ten men uh, elders of the city and said, sit down here. So they sat down. So he's bringing the relative into the and city. The, and the name, of the, the name of the relative never shows up in the book mm. of Ruth. This, listen. Uh, this relative could have been the ancestor of the Messiah if he married Ruth. Yeah. And his name is never mentioned as if God is giving us a hint. Or S Samuel Webb wrote it. He's, don't worry about it. Forget him. that guy. <laughs> yeah, forget <laughs> that guy because we don't even, we can't trace him. Yeah. He, listen, he could, have, he could have married Ruth. He was the first in line. Yeah, yeah. And his name is never mentioned, not once in the text. He's the first redeemer. He can, yeah. he can save Ruth. He can be the ancestor of the Messiah. But it's like Samuel, whoever wrote it, knows it's Boaz. So he doesn't even mention the names. It just gives us an incredible, incredible insight of names are really important. If God mm. wants to show us, he's going to mention the name. If it's not important, his name is not even going to mm. be, he's not even, his name is not even mentioned, the, the, the first redeemer. And of course, as you said, he, he, he passes away, he passes his, his, his opportunity and yeah. says, he, he, he tell Boaz, um, uh, you can you can marry her. And then, in Ruth ch uh, chapter uh, chapter four, verse thirteen, and that's th th now we're getting. This is really we're going close to the end, but it's it's going back to the beginning. If you yeah. read Ruth four thirteen, so Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. And he when he went into her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bore a son. Who gave her conception? God did. God, because who held her? from not getting pregnant for 10 years. God did. God. So she married Boaz and all of us, God gave her birth, g g gave her a, yeah. a pregnancy. So you, God kept her for 10 years and you for know, Boaz. In, in her mind, she's like thinking, well, am I even worth, could, could I even have kids? I tried for I was, 10 years, a, a young man, you know, like young guy. How, how with this old guy, it's like Abraham and Sarah, you know, how am I gonna have a Abraham child in my old age? And another woman that God wouldn't let Get, getting pregnant only by Judah. She would get pregnant only by Judah, not by his three sons. Who yeah. did God keep? Tamer. Yeah. Tamar, you Tamar, said? Tamar, yeah. Tamar. Tamar. Three sons Judah had, and none of them got Tamar pregnant. 
only Judah himself. Huh. So it's like, again, if God chooses somebody, yeah. and, and you know, we're, we're doing it for, for, for a, a Christian audience, believers, if God chose you, yeah. He has such a wonderful purpose for you. He wouldn't let go. You know, you know, yeah. he wouldn't. It could take ten years. It could take one year. Could, whatever, whatever God is, God had for you. Right. It's gonna bring it forth. And just, and just thank you to like whatever you've gone through in your life. You might think, well, man, all these tragedies hit me, but you know, we might not have that same story as. You know, you're the great, you know. Yeah, but Ruth had every excuse to, to whine. To, to, yeah. To, to whine about her life and the other came from. Uh, I mean, in, in the moment, what? it all looked bad. And especially, you even think of Naomi. and It would seem like Naomi, Naomi was very faithful to the Lord. I don't think she was the one that made the decision to go to, to go Moab. To, yeah. You know, she was just following along her husband. But she came back. But she came back. And there's tragedy, tragedy, tragedy. But God had triumph. And by the way, she's coming back to the same city where David is going to be born in the Messiah, mm. Beit Lechem. Again, the incub incubator, the womb. Yeah. Beit Lechem. She's going back there. And of course, as we're you know coming to this uh, season where we're celebrating Messiah's birth, you know exactly. It's 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 interesting to see this story and, of the gospel here as we is, think about this. And things. this is how the book of Ruth ends. If you can read verses four. 1722 and then and we'll end with that you know okay. verse 17 also the neighbor women gave him a name saying there's a son born to naomi and they called his name obed he's the father of jesse the father of david yeah and then it goes through the genealogy and mm -hmm. the last verse 22 obed begot jesse and jesse begot david so the whole, the whole plot that god somehow miraculously did for ruth and boaz with you know with ruth history and everything with boaz could have could, could have given her to a different to, to another man and he passed the whole thing was to give birth mm. to, to 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 the father of the messiah so good it's it's just i mean the birth of the messiah from the house of bread the the, the womb out of which uh, out of which the messiah would come and that's that's the story of ruth if you, mm. you see Ruth, you see the, the, the Messiah all over it. That's why we wow. said the, the gospel, according to the, the roots of the gospel in, in, in the book of Ruth. Uh, so good. Well, I just, I'm, I'm blessed by this. This is such a good, encouraging message just to hear, again, how, how deep the roots of faith go as we read through the patriarchs and we see the roots of the gospel in every book Amen. and, and th written throughout history. Like the Holy Spirit wrote this story for each of them so that we could be encouraged today as we listen. Amen. So beautiful. The glory goes to God. So, Amen. Father in heaven, I just pray for all of our listeners that you would bless them, that you would keep them. Lord, whatever they're going through, maybe they're going through tragedy and they just don't see God's purpose inside of it. They don't see how God could ever redeem such a situation. We just ask that you would give them, give them the faith of Ruth that would believe in you, that would believe that you have a redemption story for them in every situation, and so that they would take hold of you and that they would come under the shadow of your wings. So we just pray this in Yeshua's name, that you would encourage us and help for us to encourage others with this message. In Yeshua's name we ask, amen. amen. If this touched your heart, will you help pay it forward so that others can hear the same message of life? Partner with our team to bring the gospel to Israel and the nations.